Hello everyone, my name is Big Head Code, and today I'm going to be reviewing a game called Man Eater. It's available now for the PC, PS4, Xbox One, and later this year on Nintendo Switch. I was sold on the premise of Man Eater alone, playing as a shark in an open world, you get to eat other creatures and evolve, it sounded amazing, and I don't know how a game like this didn't already exist. The game follows a Discovery Channel inspired show called Man Eater, and it's narrated by Chris Parnell. And they're following a shark hunter by the name of Scaly Pete, and he has the best Cajun accent since Gambit from the old X-Men cartoon, mon ami. There was somebody better at this, you'd be following them, yeah? And Scaly Pete is on the lookout for a mega shark that killed his father years ago, but you play as a baby bull shark whose mother is actually killed by Scaly Pete in the introduction of the game. Graphically, Man Eater is a beautiful game to look at. It features multiple different areas, each with their own unique feel and look. Uh, there's a bayou swampland filled with alligators, there's a large gulf, it's full of orcas and hammerhead sharks, and the way you explore the world and unlock new areas, it definitely makes the world feel more expansive, but the size of the open world isn't without its faults. There's loading screens that pop up randomly while in the middle of gameplay, and the game struggles to run when multiple ships and creatures are on the screen, which is like often. I was fighting the frame rate as much as I was fighting apex predators. Because of the dipping frame rate, most fights uh, with shark hunters on the surface are just really hard to tell what's going on. So the best technique to do was just to jump and then mash the bite button and then hope that the autofocus would pick up an enemy. And then speaking of the autofocus, it's performed by clicking the R3 button like in most games, but Maneater doesn't feature an auto lock system. Instead, clicking R3 just points the camera in the direction of the closest enemy. Normally this isn't a problem, but almost all attacks both you and your enemy have are lunging attacks, meaning you immediately lose sight of your enemy once they just lunge at you. So you have to click R3 again, and then the camera will lock onto them, not even lock on them, it just looks at them again, then they'll dash again, and then you have to click R3 again, then you attack, but then you lunge, so you, they're not on the camera. And basically, you're just clicking R3 and the bite button over and over again which over the course of a 10 hour campaign isn't super fun. Uh, I hope in the future they could patch in an auto lock system. It really helped this game out because combat is 90% of what you do in this game. There are a handful of missions and collectibles scattered throughout the map, but most of the missions come down to the same key gameplay elements. You just basically you kill this creature or the other kind of missions or you kill 10 of this kind of creature and that's basically it. And periodically you battle apex versions of creatures you faced before, but they're really just like larger versions of those same enemies and the strategy to defeat them doesn't really change. The surface combat is by far better than the underwater combat. It's really rewarding to perfectly jump and grab an enemy off a ship, but sadly, these moments are few and far between. But killing enemies, it raises your infamy level, causing stronger shark hunters to come after you. But even at the max level of infamy, the strategy to take down the shark hunters doesn't really change much uh, from the very first level. But defeating boss shark hunters and apex creatures unlock new evolutions for your shark, uh, you get like electric fins and like bone armor, electric teeth. It's pretty cool. The customization system is handled really well and it looks really cool graphically. And then by the end of the game, your little baby bull shark turns into a giant mega shark. He's covered in bones, electricity. It's really, really cool to look at. The shark hunter is the only thing keeping tourists from a nasty, horrible death. Outside of just avoiding the beach for a few hours. Hands down, the best part of the game has to be the narration by Chris Parnell. Uh, you may know him from SNL, he's also in Rick and Morty. Uh, he chimes in during most activities in the game, and he varies from educational to pretty much, he's pretty much always hilarious. And the game has a great sense of humor, there's tons of movie references in the form of these points of interest that you can find scattered throughout the map. There's a bunch that are like really, really funny. There was one, it's the three seashells from Demolition Man, and they got the frozen banana sand from Arrested Development. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones, I don't want to spoil them for you, but a few of them actually did make me laugh. In the not-so-distant future, a young visionary entrepreneur will spot these three shells while snorkeling and revolutionize after-toilet care. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> like I said before, the main campaign can be beat in about 10 hours. My first playthrough took me about 13, and I did find most of the collectibles and the points of interest. But the game allows for a free roam mode after you've completed the main campaign, and this lets you find all the collectibles and evolutions for your shark. The game's not full price, it's only $39.99, but it's really hard to suggest it in its current state. Uh, my game crashed a couple times, the frame rate, like I said, it just makes this game a chore to play, and the lack of a lock-on system makes the combat like really unappealing. Uh, I suggest you wait for a sale or updates in the future, 
Um, but if you guys want to pick it up, pick it up. I mean, the game's $39.99. If you guys do, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I did kind of take a different approach to this review. So let me know what you guys think. My name is Big Head Code, and I want to thank you again for watching.